material fit for production uh, then it is the process of uh, examining and correcting the written points and material so and uh, it will be suitable for publication then uh, when i'm talking about or we're talking about the editing of distance teaching material uh, it will happen when a teacher or uh, editor in a distance education institution will realize that uh, it is a complex job it is not an easy job because it is different from editing a normal book so uh, there is a question arise how does a distance education editor different from the other ed editors uh, so uh, when we'll talk about the newspaper mag or magazine editor uh, they are uh, not brief the reporters right uh, so in correspondence uh, the writers on what to write and how to write it will be matter so we should uh, notice the common feature in the work of uh, these editors that they usually begin editing only after receiving something that has already been produced by others, uh, whether it is a newspaper article or a book or a film. Also, the editors in all these cases operate in a comparatively independent but narrow domain. So in other words, we can say that there is very little scope for negotiation, compromises and adjustment between the editors and the writers. So in such a situation, it will be extremely unhelpful in the editing of course material for distance education. So the process, process of editing is carried out during the process of course planning, development and production. Then the question arises, why do the editorial function differ? So here, uh, the function of the editors differ because the aim of the institutions or firms in which the work differ. So the editor of a newspaper or a popular magazine always has in mind the commercial success of the uh, film. Naturally, it will be making a news item or a uh, story as a sensational and attractive as possible as in keeping with uh, journalistic ethics. So this is equally true of the editors of commercial radio and television program and of publishing houses uh, thriving on the publication of cheap novels. So on the other hand, uh, the editors of serious academic and research publication aim at a comparatively restricted, select and elite, uh, elite audience. So when we'll see normally making a news or a story as a sensational and attractive as possible as in keeping with journal uh, journalistic ethics. Uh, so it, uh, and then we can say that it also allow understandable and a wide range of variation in presenting language style though they may be strict in the content so here as an editor of distance education course material is obviously different from uh, another one so we have to think more about the learners interest than about our own editorial freedom in the usual sense or about the auditorial rights so we we have to pay considerably attention to make the course materials have helpful and useful to the learners so in this process we have to make compromises and address adjustment with the writers then uh, then uh, as a edit uh, as, a, as the editor of distance uh, course material we need to care little for the value of the personal experience and investigate the correspondence but cares only for the name of the correspondent and uh, we are not going to publish the article after careful omitting the conversational portion so if the editor is just worried about his or her job then she or he will withhold the article by not publishing it and not informing the writer about it so a clever editor will wait for same uh, wait for some time till public opinion changes in favor of the act, uh, writer's view on the particular event and then proceed to publish the article without any alteration so he or may possibly write a brief introduction before publishing the article so now come to the different roles of editors in different teaching uh, organization uh, uh, in teaching organization so the degree of our compromises adjustments freedom and rights depends on the nature of the course requirements of different distance teaching institutions so 
some institutions have editors who play a dominant role at every stage of course development starting from course planning up to course production and launching of the course and uh, then some of the other institution have well established course teams where the editor functions as a coordinator of the various activities that constitute course development and production so the open learning agency and uh, can work at the rest of the job so there are some institutions which because of certain peculiar circumstances expect the editors to do content editing and linguistic correlation or uh, corrections uh, leading course planning and course development to the academics of the division or school uh, concern so the current practice at indira gandhi national uh, igno Uh, falls under this category so then come to the editorial function in the development of distance teaching material so whatever um, whatever be the specific nature of the work of editors in a particular distance teaching institution there are certain common editorial function to be carried uh, carried out either by the editor alone or with the help of the uh, course team in order to come Complete the course production satisfactorily. So the International Extension College Manual for Editors of Distance Teaching Material lists the following um, uh, essential aspects. Let's discuss one by one. That is, appointing or hiring writers to write courses, preparing the writers to write, developing a course outline that will help the writers, deciding on the structure of a unit. briefing the writers and presenting the subject matter and introducing students activities providing uh, advice to distance learners judging the reading level of learners editing the language testing the material before printing deciding on the format copy editing pro uh, production and printing course maintenance and revision coordinating writing and production so in addition to this we can also include the choice of media which uh, 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 which uh, and assignments in the domain of editing so next come to the processing the written material so the process is as in, uh, <coughs> interesting as our editorial work is <coughs> one challenging so once the content material is received we need to uh, have both the power and responsibilities to shape it modify it and set in set it in the most suitable way to produce distance teaching units and blocks so we need to have to process it with the help of educational technologies and other instructional designers of our in, uh, of the institution okay so uh, here uh, we have to examine the unit and lesson for two major perspective one is content accuracy or content ed editing then come to the structural uh, correctness and format or format editing so in content editing if the writer of foundation course has written about few points in detail and left of the left out of the general aspect of a given subject then we said the content is in inadequate so similarly if an undergraduate course is loaded with difficult points which are meant for post graduates or research students we may say that the content level is inappropriate so uh, now the question is how we can decide this issue so ideally uh, we should wait for the comments of the course items at our institute uh, or we can consult the course director or get the opinion and comments of other subject experts so this means allowing more time a democratic process in arriving at a consensus uh, uh, so where there is not feasible uh, then we can take a decision on this assuming full responsibilities for whatever choices we make so if the content is too heavy try to make on um, uh, we try to make it lighter so if it's too the uh, thin then we can add a little more substance and make it is a it a responsible dense so it will be good if this uh, feeding could be done by, by the writer themselves then come to the format editing so after deciding the on the adequacy of the content as an uh, editor we need to see whether the writer has followed uh, the guidelines or briefing on the presentation of the content and has structured it in such a way as to help the distance learners learn without the presence of a teacher so that is uh, we can uh, check the material 
to see whether the text is self instructional or not so we have to satisfy ourselves that a unit has a proper introduction clearly stated aims and objectives in behavioral terms adequate access device a clear logical presentation and summary and then come to the then come to uh revising the text before preparing the manuscript so uh, when we uh, sat, uh, when we are satisfied with the content and the format of the written text it is uh, advisable and useful to pass on the material to the course team or the academics concerned and to ask for their comments opinions suggestion and criticism so uh, we should remember that in spite of our careful editing of the material we may have still failed to notice certain shortcomings so the opinion criticism etc of the of course team or the academics may suggest that certain sections need further modification or some more points are to be included so we can make the necessary changes with approval of the writers then um, we will do the editing okay next come to the language editing so uh, here the question uh, is uh, the uh, the question of language in writing and editing distance teaching learning materials uh, is always significant so if it is the language used that makes the self learning material comprehensible or difficult interesting or boring so the language used should be simple and clear for effective communication with the learners so language editing is done to vet um, vocabulary and sentence used in the material so as an editor examine the simplicity and comprehensibility of the words used and make necessary changes so that learners will have easy access to the content so what we need to do we need to have simple language effective communication and readability so when i'm talking about readability readability is a quality of text that grips our attention and persuades our uh, persuades the learner to read further and comprehend the text without getting bored or tired so, uh, then here there is a question how to read a self learning text so a self learning text should persuade the learner to read it participate it and interact uh, with it before it makes us think critically about it to help accelerate the process it is absolutely necessary to write in a language which communicates more directly so this is in general we can say true of all good text and it is imperative in distance teaching to make communicative effective and direct next come to uh, uh, simple language in distance learning material so question is why simple language so by simple language we mean, uh, here we mean that uh, language that is straightforward and relatively unambiguous meaning so it should convey the message without uh, making us uh, rake our brains over the meaning of words and phrases so if our lesson make me consult uh, the dictionary very often then we are using too many unfamiliar words so if the sentence force me to reread them very often their structure must be difficult twisted and complicated and then come to the sentences so construct uh, our sentences in such a way as to communicate directly as far as possible keep um, we need to keep sentence short try to write simple sentences in place of complex sentences if our sentence is too lengthy then simple sentence can be very long break into two or more small simple sentences so it is necessary that we should always write simple sentences of course compound and complex sentences have their own is but often we need to manage with simple sentence okay then come to the vocabulary so uh, when i'm pointing out the vocabulary part here we need to notice that some of high sounding words and adjective in the above uh, 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 in the long sentence have been omitted in its written form so vocabulary is an area where we can stick to some rules uh, we can never go far high sounding difficult words when you have easily understandable common words so as far as possible we need to use short words 
multi uh, multi syllabic words often uh, and here uh, multi syllabic words often make our writing difficult so the right style pompous and the message weak uh, so simple we can say that i came i saw and i conquered so we can try this simple uh, sentence so uh, if you see the a sentence like a truck carrying eggs collided with a bus all eggs were broken so in this uh, if you see the stick to the rule that you should use active verbs uh, we can write a truck collided with a bus so the bus broke all the uh, eggs so we but we could want to write like this so then come to the paragraph so para uh, paragraphing in another uh, it is an another important feature in writing even if our sentences grammar vocabulary are simple and very intelligible lengthy passages may spoil the effect so as far as possible um, we need to present our ideas in the gradual logical development each idea in one paragraph so if we want to want to pack our paragraph with very very many very many ideas we may be uh, taxing the reader too much so then come to the style so there is no rule to teach uh, ourselves how to develop a style so we must struggle hard to develop a style of our own however we can learn much from different style of various writers perhaps we may prefer one to another sometimes we may try to imitate the style of our favorite writer and we may be quite successful in that also okay uh, next come to the uh, evaluating the difficult level of language so print material besides audio and video program constitute a major part of the self learning material whether in the form of instructions case studies articles technical reports and or textbooks uh, so of course other component, components such as diagrams map chart figure table uh, it also there so psychologists educational language experts have conducted extensive research to evaluate the language label suitable for a particular group of learners so but there is find, their findings and recommendations can only help us to limited extent when we write lessons for distance learners so however we may keep in mind general guidelines to evaluate the level of difficulty of language then come to the copy editing and printing so copy editing and printing are the most mechanical aspect of course production uh, so these are the aspects common to the editing of textbooks and journals nevertheless they are important in the production of self learning material as are other kinds of editorial work so here uh, there are some clear um, instructions like uh, starting a unit indicating section headings um, we need to with a new page uh, when it, uh, indicating section headings we need to have uh, in capital or bold letters laying out exercises uh, identify special features like objective main point summaries etc arranging paragraphs allocating space for activities exercises tables games and uh, diagrams and illustration then construction mark then come to the problem faced by the editors of distance teaching learning material teaching one material so after we have had some years of experience in editing distance teaching materials we need may cope up with work quite well even if we uh, if our institution is one new one and the demand made on us are very difficult so uh, if we have a trained course team our job will be free of risk so now think of a situation where the institution is new it aims are unique it doesn't have a course team although it is trying to create one so the editor is not familiar with the editing of distant teaching learning material and the course writers are also new to the job so this is actually the case with the most countries in the developing world so but even in such circumstances we need to have such uh, start somewhere because we are the editors so since there is a serious shortage of course writers we decided to contact subject experts who also have some expertise in distance teaching hoping that we can manage with the help of these academics uh, and we don't have educational technology uh, so uh, here uh, 
we also fair amount of optimistic um, when we go ahead and sign contracts with our writers and some writers uh, show a lot of enthusiasm and readily agree to write on uh, the units for us other us uh, assure that we will do the job as the best as they can so uh, we need to send them the briefs uh, and prepare basis for guidelines and the curriculum plan by the course committee so there are so many uh, uh, problems we can say that uh, the printer tells that we need to wait at least a month there are a dummy uh, then we need to inform so in printing we may face a number of problem so we need to overcome so with such problems then come to the unit 3 that is course maintenance and revisions okay so here uh, in this, we, have, we will discuss about the uh, corporate, uh, co corrective operations, uh, level of corrections, and so on. So first, come to the two corrective operations. So distance education courses have a lifespan of a number of course uh, terms. So that is to say, a distance, uh, a distance education course is not discarded after being used for just one group of learners. So it is used with successive learner groups enrolled in the program year after year. So over the lifespan of a course, all three considerations listed, and that is uh, attributes of the group, changing uh, values and requirements, the content and its uh, presentation and new development or you know, uh, invention in the relevant fields or even by changes in the program of the course, the examination patterns, etc. The impact of changes in these respects in turn affects the quality of the course in turn if suitable amendments or revisions are not carried out. So, uh, two corrective operations become necessary to maintain the quality of a course once it is produced. So, that is updating the course in respect of content, presentation, curricular changes and dealing with the development and production uh, error. So both are significant and the former grows extensively operationally as the uh, course grows older, but it is not likely to demand any great attention immediately on launching a course. So the later operation is different from the former one uh, in that it demands immediate attention soon after a course is put to use. So if uh, due attention is paid during the process of course development and production and in the initial years of course use, it may grow operationally less expensive with the passage of time. While the former corrective operation is directed by the changes witnessed outside the process of course production, the latter is governed by failure within the process. So, uh, three levels of correction we will discuss that is two corrective operations described, uh, one, then come to the one is course maintenance and course revision. At the course maintenance level, the possible activities are dealing with the errors that have escaped notice or appeared at the time of proofreading, then changing a word or phrase or a mark of punctuation here and there, reprinting a short section or two. To if the errors there in are too many to list down or too complex to explain. So the amount of redrafting or reprinting of the course material at this level is kept to the minimum, not beyond a section containing substantial errors. So at the level of course revision, we are concerned with the almost similar details, but a more liberal attitude towards uh, redrafting part of course material is not is allowed so uh, parts or whole of units or blocks may be written if this is a deemed necessary so um, but uh, if an entire course needs to be rewritten it is advisable to withdraw it and replace it with a new course uh, in such cases of replacement the question uh, of the following the two lines operation which are applicable in the case of course maintenance and then come to the uh pre-operation activities collecting information about the changes required so before we have discussed about the systematic feedback and from course on systematic collection of 
information now we will uh, so the two means are not mutually exclusive but complete uh, completion of each other here and we will discuss about the systematic feedback from course users so systematic feedback uh, can be obtained from the records of the learners scores on assignment the learners assessment of the course material so assignment record a periodic review learn uh, a periodic review of learner scores and assignments can help us identify problems with the assignment. So we should ascertain the course difficulty. So difficulties emerging from assignments may have the following uh, discussion we are going to do. So the learner ability assumed for a while preparing the ass assignment may be much higher than the actual learner ability and uh, consequently, uh, the standard or level of performance ex expected may be higher than it can be in reality. So, the objective or the tax set for the assignment may not reflect the objective of the learning experience of the unit that proceeded. So, the presentation of the assignment may be defective. As a consequence, uh, the learner gets a partially or totally different idea of the tax required from, uh, from what the course writer intends to give. So, the, then come to the learner's assessment of the course material. So, the learner's assessment of the course material can help us in uh, process of improving the material. So, this assessment can be carried out by presenting an assessment questionnaire with, the, with every assignment or unit and getting the learner's response to it. Uh, then come to on systematic collection of information. So in this, we can collect information on the necessary quality maintenance activities. Then, uh, so these methods will also be useful and they need to be looked down upon simply because, because uh, the process here, uh, is on systematic. So the institution can send a course comments page or a difficulty sheet with every course book and ask the learners to return this with a, a remark. So it can invite the learners to write about the difficulties or problems they face. So it can also ask them to point out the errors they notice. So learners may hesitate to write in the beginning, but they ought to be encouraged to communicate even an angry letter from a dissatisfied learner, some useful hints uh, uh, as how to maintain improved course quality. So the institution can also get error pointed out by its own faculty. For instance, the uh, source of difficulty in assignments which we mentioned can be noticed when a majority of learners proceed on the basis of a misunderstanding. So uh, here one can collect views from the subject experts on the faculty of similar institution, prospective learners, employee, etc. So the member of the faculty can meet with uh, students during seminars, seminar schools, or any other gathering at study centers or regional service centers. Then come to the keeping the record of information collected. So the uh, here the section is makes obvious that the collection of requisite information is not to be affected uh, at one sitting, nor from one single source or uh, information where proper efforts are initiated, uh, will keep coming from different sources around the year. So here, hence it is uh, necessary to develop and maintain a device to keep record of all pieces of relevant information that are obtained from time to time and from different sources. So to maintain and uh, to meet this purpose, the institution should maintain a co uh, correction file for each course. So the file may, uh, may be opened as soon as the course is printed. So all the information pertaining uh, to the correction needed and the difficulties experienced should be placed in this file. Besides, a copy of the course book should be written with this file exclusively for the purpose of making errors. So we can call this a mark copy. So the marking should preferably to be made in some brightly colored ink so as to be noticeable. 
observations helpful to update the course with regard to the post publication development in the area concerns then come to the course material operation here we will discuss, discuss about the deciding on the correction to make so course maintenance involves a series of activities which are to um, plan uh, when um, the error data are collected then we must be decide in respect of each correction log whether it is to be dealt with urgently or whether it can wait. In other words, we need to decide or we should decide whether leaving a correction unattended will seriously affect the understanding of a learner. That is, we should decide as to which error are serious enough as to warrant immediate remedial treatment and which if we allow to stay uncorrected and are likely to mislead the learner. So, the choice of the correction notes to be used immediately should be immediately should be made on the basis of seriousness of the error involved. Then come to the carrying out the correction. So, when we have identified the errors that need immediate attention, we can prepare and express it. We can prepare an extra sheet which must contain an index column uh, precisely the context of error occurrence and error column where a, a phrase, word or line is given with error component clearly mark a correction column. Next come to the rewriting parts. So in rewriting parts of course or short um, passes there are four to five lines may be undertaken when the parts either are found to suffer from substantial errors. So, rewriting part, of course, is admissible for yet another purpose, namely that of objecting, but it should not attempt it just because we find a part of our courses likely unsatisfactorily. So, we had a better, we had better allow it to stay till the course is revised. So, it is not possible to revise course simply because there is some scope for improvement. Then come to the minimizing course maintenance uh, operation. So, there may be a certain part of a course which need to be changed periodically. For instance, the course committee directing the preparation or implementation of a course may desire to change assignments with every learner enrollment. So, in the process of course development, we, if we design our courses to accommodate such routine change, it will keep the work of course maintenance at a minimum. For us, printing assignments separately is preferable, uh, preferable uh, in such cases. Then come to the revising for course. So, revision operations are much more elaborate and broad-based than maintenance operation. So, consequently, they involve more time, money, planning, and effort. So, an institution cannot generally afford to spend its resource on revising a course after every other term. So, the general policy to check whether a course needs revision after a period of operation of, say, five to seven years. In practice, even this frequency is often found to be difficult to stick to because of the pressure of work on institutions. So, but at any rate, to allow a course to continue on revised beyond 10 years of continuous use is not advisable because even it can, if the content remains satisfactory, the written material may begin to appear dated. So, course revision is then to be thought of under either or both the following circumstances. That is, uh, when the course becomes too old-fashioned to continue in use, the quantum of course maintenance activities become too large and relatively more ex expensive than, uh, um, than course revision. Then come to the how to decide on the need for a revision. Uh, so, this uh, any course revision should be undertaken on a planned basis. So, as it involves consider uh, considerably expenditure, it should be initiated only when we are sure that it cannot be postponed any further. So, a periodic checking of the course may guide us in the, uh, deciding whether a revision is immediately necessary or not. So, the source that will help, uh, help us confirm this necessity are the corrections file, learners' comments on our assessment of the course, tutors' comments on our assessment of the course, so comments of an 
external authority on the subject, consultation with experts, opinions of former students on the usefulness of the course, and views of potential students on their expression from the course. Then come to uh, the uh, consideration which we need that is the age of the course, the degree of its success, the period of its operation, the stock position, the life expectancy of the course, the student's strength, the finance and workforce available, the institutional priority. And then come to the revision operation. Here are some of the issues we need to address. That is, when we decide on the revision of a course, we also have to decide on what exactly to revise. Uh, so most of on the entire course doesn't need alteration. So if we find that the whole course needs substantial change, we had better replace it with a different course rather than the revision. So revision should not be confused with replacement. Since revision is relevant, when it is required for a partial modification of the material in ease, we need to modify only those parts which are found to too difficult for the learner to follow, which affect bad teaching or learning, of which have become out, there, out of date. So a course revision is not to be uh, equated with the rewriting of the whole course. Some parts of the course may need to be completely rewritten, while some may need a few amendment and yet others may be written without any change. Then come to the, we'll uh, discuss about the unit 4 that is quality assurance in uh, open and distance learning material. So here we will discuss about uh, quality assurance. Uh, always there is, when I'm talking about quality assurance, it denotes those practices in distance education which lead to some kind of public formal guarantee or certification. So quality assurance is typically a matter of judging the outcome of the implementation of course material. A special performance or testing exercise. So in the domain of distance education, quality assurance includes the course approval mechanism, teamwork for preparing materials, processing of designing the material, and the review of the material which are subject to scrutiny uh, scrutiny either in the form of student questionnaires or by the review of external experts. So the findings of the formal procedure are usually publicly announced or at least made available to the practitioners. So in this way, quality assurance is an ongoing process and is public and formal in its nature. So in general, quality assurance is defined as the process whereby standards are specified for a uh, product or service and steps are taken to ensure that these standards are made substantially. So after learning uh, the concept, then let's discuss about how it is an ongoing process. So uh, inputs to the teaching and learning, it includes the process, the output, the individual in, uh, institution, at least management, the discipline or the course and the program of the Study. Then come to the what does quality mean in distance education. The quality is defined uh, in uh, different ways. One simple meaning of quality is in the customer satisfaction with a product or its fitness for its particular purpose. So it can usually be constructed or interpreted in terms of excellence, consistency, uh, consistency and achievement of specific standards. So in this context, we will be discussing the definition of quality being used with regard to the product within the distance education uh, institution which is a producer of a large number of self-learning material and service provider. It is also a producer of programs, courses related products such as units, blogs, books, videos, CD-ROMs, etc. So which have to adhere to specify quality measures and of a service that is the provision of higher education. So this provision covers counseling, tutorials, assessments, and degree of diploma or certificate rewards, hours. And the distance education system needs to know and to be able to measure the quality of its products and service, uh, services. In a simple way, we can say that the quality is not synonymous with excellence. It indicates the management of a continuous process aimed at bridging the gap between the uh, expected effect and the actual effect. 
so however the criteria for a quality product and a quality service are distinctly different in their objectives because service is often intangible and cannot be sold and it is uh, usually conceived at the time of production so uh, it can be quality learning model can understood in various ways such as in a sort of superficial sense as a glossy package which doesn't offer any guarantee of the usefulness of the product then the highly engineered approach the notion of quality is about process which considers uh, what we did to get to this finished product then the third concept of quality is that referred to if we are told that the material is fit for its purpose so with uh, regard to the term fitness of the purpose we can say so the learning uh, material will definitely work when put to the test and the that then that will stand up to a cost benefit analysis then question is how is quality measured so quality assurance measures are seen as quality and security enhancing measures so today distance education has developed multi uh, typologies according to the specific needs and aspiration of learners it aims to serve as an alternative mode of educational delivery it is now evident that points of interrogation on quality assurance addressed to distance education course are equally applicable to traditional measures of quality assurance so such quality of curriculum design instructional material assessment customer satisfaction with the products and services independent external and technical reviews evaluation and validation etc then come to the benchmarking of quality assurance in learning materials so uh, when i'm talking about the benchmarking of quality assurance learning materials it said that a student centered approach to teaching or learning which encourages learner independence through instructional design techniques embedded in course materials then preparation and manufacture of course packages which are open to peer or public scrutiny in relation to their educational effectiveness intellectual rigor and production values then commitment to maximizing interaction between teacher and learner and among learners through the use of range of communication media then implementation of organization of structure management processes and financial and administrative systems geared to the development of frames and imperatives of course development then incorporation of evaluation in all aspects of distance education programs or course or units then come to the, how can we measure the uh, quality material so uh, if we need to each then you need section introduction in an interesting and stimulating way in introduction we will also see are these essential components then diagram chart table graph illustration then we need to see the content material and summary or review then come to the mechanics for quality as well so the changing scenario in open and uh, distance education has radically altered uh, the existing structure courses and pedagogies of open and distance education institutions so open campus learning is an approach to education in which the interaction between the teacher and learner takes place at a distance so the open and distance learning institution believe that its continuing commitments to access the equity learner independence and professional relevance demand a flexible interactive approach to curriculum design and modes of teaching so uh, these mechanics are course design approval monitoring and review faculty board curriculum committee the academic board course advisory committee on teaching excellence and quality assurance peer review evaluation of staff students and employees expert opinion on the material then come to the quality assurance practices in preparing learning materials so it is a case study in the uh, we have already discussed about it uh, we can uh, even take a case and we can develop how quality assurance or quality mechanics are working in the field of distance and uh, developing distance learning or teaching material then come to the next unit that is unit 
applications of new technologies in the preparation of text. So here we will discuss about the advanced technologies and pedagogical perspectives and developments in the teaching of preparation of print materials, then advanced technologies and interactive uh, writing and so on. So when I'm talking about technology, so technology is used to refer the hardware infrastructure. Communication technology refers to those networks which use telecommunication for both bringing in courses as well as sending it out. Information technology is restricted to computer-based systems. So uh, let's come to the advanced technologies and pedagogical perspectives. So a review of the development in the application of new technologies in the distance education context would be useful starting point, uh, for, uh, uh, starting point for analyzing the role of print media in distance education, the effect of other media in the preparation of text and emergence of the virtual campus. So uh, in first generation, we have the correspondence model that is print. In second generation, we have the multimedia model that is print, audio, media, tape, video tape, computer-based learning, and interactive video. Uh, in third generation, we have the table learning model that is audio teleconferencing, video teleconferencing, audio graphic. So in the fourth generation, uh, the flexible model are interactive multimedia, internet-based access to www resources. So uh, we can see clearly a picture how we progress from print to now in online teaching right now. Then come to the phase one that is mechanical script preparation. So then second one is partially integrated form and then third one is integrated electronic print development. Then come to the advanced technologies and interactive writing. So interactivity is the property of any medium that responds dynamically to use control. So we will here discuss about the concept of interactivity uh, in association with technology. For example, you can, uh, we have less considered that an everyday device and examine whether or not it is interactive and if so, how far. So the telephone is a classic interactive device. Uh, we can punch in a number, it establishes a connection to another telephone, corresponds to the number and the telephone on the other end starts ringing. So it responds to uh, user input because it locates and en uh, engages another device to which it can communicate. So one meaning uh, of interactive refers to action that must bring about a response to the user's control. So this condition is met only when a user on the other end picks up telephone to open a communicate channel and starts uh, speaking. So uh, when the oral communication is initiated, the action becomes dynamic because the user responds dynamically to the communication from the other end and vice versa. So a telephone fits our definition of an interactive medium only when communication is actually established. Then come to the interactive. So interactive is the provision for the learner to respond in some way to the teaching material and obtain comments or feedback on this response. Uh, so we have stated that interactive is regarded as especially important in teaching and distance learning when, where the teacher and student are separated by distance. So some uh, form of meditating technology uh, then uh, whether printed material, audio and video cassettes, radio, television, computer or teleconferencing are essential to minimize problems of communication. So students on distance learning courses generally have limited opportunities for interaction with their tutors or other peer learners and the learning materials, whether in print or electronic form, have to take on some of this role. So distance learners interact with the self-learning materials simply by reading them, listening to them or watching them and thinking about what they say. Then come to the why is interaction important? So yeah, um, because uh, an interactive approach can make up for the lack of other kinds of interaction and reduce the learner's sense of isolation. 
then an interactive approach can personalize distance learning material and bring the writer closer to the learner then an interactive approach is likely uh, likely to stimulate deep rather than surface learning then interaction uh, is uh, essential if print materials are to meet the requirement for a learning dialogue then interaction can encourage active learning and ensure that learning try things out of out for themselves then an interactive approach can help students to process new ideas and link them with their existing experience so it will be help to anchor learning so how do we make material interactive so incorporation of a variety ways of presenting the material activities that focus the learners attention on the subject activities that encourage learners to reflect on their existing knowledge and expert experience and on how far this may be relevant to the subject then activities that suggest ways in which learners can apply what they are learning then problem solving activities and pro project work so interactivity and the new media and then come to the new media so today interactive media is enjoying similar recognition as the technology of city room and online communication take hold in our society so these technologies are no longer nobilities we can say as we know uh, uh most interactive learning is possible uh, possible through multimedia where the writer can mix a variety of visuals of sound with the text in some cases the text is simply the framework from photographic pictures illustrations animations and video all of the uh, which can be used within the text and can be accessed at the user's discretion in other cases the entire presentation will be using images and animation with audio while the text itself is a supplement then come to that the technology of writing the text for different advanced media so the, uh, it can involve four, six major components and these are assessment of the needs of distance learners defining goals identification of specific learning tasks structuring instruction planning learner interactivity implementation so designing and developing computer based learning materials include the programmer or course designer has to plan the develop plan the final product as a whole which is much more than the sum of all the above components so the uh, starting point of all the program or learning materials is uh, to understand the learner uh, it include defining the goal identifying the task structuring instruction planning learner interactivity implementation of the factors such as equipment and then uh, we also include and the compatibility with the machines basic knowledge of instructional design and evaluation basic knowledge of authoring systems and tools so developing the text for computer based learning material uh, we will discuss that is a uh, we can say it is a type based uh, family of graphic character that usually includes many type of sizes and styles uh, it includes the uh, using text in designing uh, materials designing the text choosing the uh, focus which will include the, uh, for, uh, for small type is the most legible font available huge few different faces as available in the same work then vary the size of a font in proportion to the importance of the message you are delivering then in large uh, size headline adjust the spacing between letters to show that spacing is appropriate then come to the feel for reading so we are already working on of fill it uh, uh, where the solution that put the text into a scrolling field put the text into single field in a project window that the user can move up or down upon command then break up the text into fields that fit on the monitor size pages then uh, we can also use the html document preparation that is hypertext mark uh, markup language now we can also use the uh, here on uh, the, uh, the components of html documents preparation are the symbols and the icons and then animating text we can use sound we can use animation we can use images we can use hypermedia and hypertext we can also use the multimedia in this then come to the what are the strengths and weakness of hypermedia so the strengths are the highly motive it is highly motivating allows one in uh, in the study caters to individual difference it is based uh, on students autonomy offers linkage with related ideas allows flexibility of time and space 
offers rich multidisciplinary sensory learning. So the weaknesses are the learners can get lost in cyberspace. The learner is expected to be a computer expert. Students' feedback is not invited. It is time consuming. Then come to the uh, DTB that is desk and desktop publishing. So here uh, we need to have and uh, different types of software we use for uh, uh, for write up text to develop graphics or to design pages. So uh, we can also design and develop a CD ROM uh, for which we have the that the tailor has described that. Uh, multimedia design of distance learning, they are the narrative development, interactive sources, and resource development. Then come to the design and development of online learning material for which we have to write less, write precisely, write with sidebars, arrange the link properly, use pictures and multimedia elements, use pictures and multimedia uh, elements, file the pictures are the um, uh, and multimedia can take long time to load. Uh, we can provide good appearance to the text material. So we will use the use ta table of contents and allow searching. Okay, this is all about your MS 112 that is designing for the distance teaching learning material. Thank you.